So when I was little, I loved fairy tales. I loved them because they were magical, and because they made me think that magic was possible in even the most ordinary little girl's life. So tonight, I'd like to tell you a fairy tale about my Tibetan bull. But like all fairy tales, it's not really a story about my bull. It's really a story about each of you. So I've got this critical voice in my head. It says things like, "Heather, did you honestly think that was a good thing to say last night?" <laughs> oh my God, Heather, did you walk out in that outfit? I used to work with this guy who I used to try to avoid because he, you know, told rumors and he had criticisms for everybody. But sometimes it's like he's there in my head with me still. So a Tibetan bowl is made out of a special bronze alloy, and when you strike it with a mallet, it makes this amazing vibration. It's kind of like a musical note, and that's why they're called singing bowls. So about five years ago, I was in Kathmandu, and. Uh, one day, all of us decided we wanted to go see something called the Monkey Palace. Now, the Monkey Palace is in this ancient city, and it's on this tall tower, this big hill, and there are 365 steps to go up this hill. So we got to the bottom of the step, and I'm like trudging up these 365 steps. And I looked up, and on the outside of the temple, there were these Buddhist eyes painted, and they were looking down at me. And I kind of felt like they were mocking me. You thought you were in good shape, eh? <laughs> so、uh, I got into the temple, and I walked through the door, and I looked, and there were all these monks selling their wares. And I thought I wanted to get the best-sounding bowl, so I went from one table to another, ringing the bowls, listening. Right? Is that the right sound?、Yeah. I don't think so. And I try another and another one. And you know when you get that feeling that somebody is watching you? So I kind of looked up, and over there there was this monk, and he was watching me. And as soon as he caught my eye, he rushed over to me, and he said, "Come with me. I want to show you something." And I went, Okay, and I followed him into his shop, and there were all these bowls on these shelves. And he got out a footstool and he climbed on top, and he took this bowl from out of his shelf, and he showed me the scar inside of it. And he said, "You know, this bowl used to be an ordinary bowl. It used to sound like all those other bowls that you were trying, but then something totally amazing happened." He said, "It dropped off the shelf and it broke." And when we welded it together, it was incredible because I got a mallet and I hit it like this. And when I heard this low, sweet tone from this bowl that was so much more beautiful than everything else I'd tried, something inside me shifted, and I almost started to cry. You see, because I always had thought that I was broken. I had always thought I was flawed, and there was something wrong with me. So I used to work in the tall towers in Toronto, and everybody looked up to me. I had a large staff, and they used to say, "Heather's so successful," but inside, I felt like something was wrong. And so sometimes, when I felt really sad, I'd nip downstairs under and go into a book、uh, store that was underneath our tower, and I'd go. Over to the self-help book section, and I would sit down in between the aisles of books, and I'd scan for titles until I found a title like "Ten Ways to Feel Better." And I'd go, "I'll give that a try." And I'd race home, and I'd pull up my covers, and I would devour that book. But nothing ever lasted for long. But when I heard that sound coming from this broken bowl, I had the thought for the first time. Maybe I'm enough. Maybe I'm okay, exactly the way I am. And so this bowl started my journey. This bowl taught me that even though I've made so many mistakes and I've said the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong people, but still, even though I've made mistakes, you know, each time I've made a mistake, I've gained wisdom. I've 
learned something that I can offer other people. And so all my mistakes, all my brokenness have made me better. And those things are now allowing me to go out to the world and offer my beautiful song. And so I know that each person in this room tonight has a beautiful song to sing. Each one of you has something unique to offer the world. And I believe with all my heart that what you have to offer is more beautiful because of those times that you have been broken. Because I believe that it is our broken, beautiful selves that connect us together and make us love each other. Thank you.